Okay, so we're looking at problem 2-24, uh, or problem 24 from chapter 2. So we're given a vector field that exists in the re exists in the region between two spherical shells, so with the first one of a radius of 2 and the second one of, with a radius of 3. So we have a shell with a radius of 2 in here, and then another shell with a radius of 3. So these, um, so it's like uh, we have a sphere with a hollow center here, um, made up with the outside shell and the inside shell. So our actual um, shape is, uh, is a hollow sphere here. So we're asked to evaluate the integral of d dot ds and the integral of the del operator dot d multiplied by db. So on the left-hand side here of the divergence theorem, we can see, um, so d, this a is just any vector. a is actually asking us for the left-hand side of the divergence theorem, and b is as actually asking us for the right-hand side of the divergence theorem. So the left-hand side of the divergence theorem uh, essentially means that um, this will tell us the amount of flux leaving an object. So the flux leaving through the surfaces of the, um, the shape, uh, the volume that we care about, is, and it says that that is actually equal to the flux change within the volume. So our volume here is a hollow sphere. So we're going to start with part A. So for part A, um, when we model our DS vectors, our differential surface vectors, we need a vector direction normal to the surface, so coming out perpendicular to the surface that we care about. So this is a general DS vector um, for the r hat direction for a sphere. So uh, general DS, so the surface vector of a sphere, um, and our normal vector, we are including that with our DS, that's the r hat direction here. Um, so we, because our volume is in between these two shells, we're going to have flux leaving uh, through the external surface and then flux leaving through the internal surface. So our flux, um, our, our differential surface for the external sphere is going to be modeled as this uh, with a positive r hat, and our differential surface for the inner sphere is going to be modeled as this but with a negative r hat. So let's set up our vector here. So I'm going to set them up separately, and then I'm going to show you that we can actually do a little mathematical trick here to combine them. So cosine squared phi uh, divided by r cubed in the r hat direction. So this ar is just equal to r hat. These are the same. Um, it's just different ways, different notations. Uh, the book may use this notation, I think, often versus the r hat. Okay, so cosine squared over r cubed times r hat. Uh, and then multiply by our ds, so r squared, sine of theta d theta d phi, uh, and then in the r hat direction, so multiply by r hat. Um, so we're dotting these two guys together, because these two are both vectors, they have a vector direction. Uh, this ds and this d are both vectors, so we are taking the dot product of both of them. Okay, um, so when we take the dot product, so r dot r, uh, it's equal to, if you got a vector with itself, it's equal to the magnitude of that vector squared. And for these directional unit vectors, the magnitude of the unit vector is always 1. So this squared is going to be equal to 1. So r dot r, um, or same for like x hat dot x hat, uh, any of these directional unit vectors, dot them with themselves, it's equal to 1. Dot them with something perpendicular and it equals 0, which you may have seen in previous videos. Uh, but we can go ahead and cancel that term. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and take out these r hat terms. Uh, because when we dot them with each other, r hat is 1, we can drop them out of the equation, and then we're going to have uh, cosine squared over r cubed, so cosine squared phi hat, right, uh, multiplied by r squared sine of theta d theta d phi. Okay, so let's look at this left-hand side and kind of do the same thing. I think our math is almost exactly this, yep, our math is exactly the same here. The only difference is that we have this um, negative r here. So we're going to pull a negative to the outside, essentially. So we are going to just say that we did all of the exact same steps over here, uh, and we're going to just pull a negative to the outside of these integrals. Okay, so we're going to simplify a little bit more here. Okay, so we're going to pull out this, this r here. So we have r squared over r to the third, and then we have uh, cosine squared of phi, uh, sine of theta d theta d phi. Okay, um, and then we are going to end up with 1 over r, and then let's go ahead and break up our components here. So we're going to group our like terms. So any um, any differential is what we need bounds for. So we need bounds for our phi, and then we need bounds or bounds for our theta, and we need bounds for our phi. Okay, so let's do sine of theta d theta, integral of cosine squared phi d phi. Okay, so we just we just grouped them here. So we just took these two guys, right? Oh, and put them on the other side. These two guys, and then we took these two guys and put them over here. 
Okay, and because our math is exactly the same on both sides, we're going to go ahead and kind of do a little bit of a cheat here and put this over here, right? The only difference is their R is going to be different, right? So this is R, R out, R outer, and this is R inner, okay? All right, um, so let's go ahead and look at our bounds for our two circles and just also remember that this is negative. Okay, so here's where we're at right now. So let's get our bounds for our, our theta and for our phi, uh, and also for our theta and for our phi for the inner circle. So let's go ahead and go on up here. Okay, so here's our shape. Uh, so by convention, uh, theta starts up here, um, and our theta range by convention is just from zero to pi. I know that seems a little weird, especially when you're looking at a full circle, but this is just a convention so that we, if we took um, uh, two pi for our theta value, we would actually end up doubling our surface area because uh, we don't want to like overlap twice. So I know it seems like a little weird, but this is just kind of by convention how we rotate the system. So the full range when you have a full sphere for theta is there zero to pi. So just keep that in mind. Um, for phi, so this notation for phi is exactly the same as, as this guy. So this is our phi right here. So don't let that trip you up. So zero to two pi. So we're going a full rotation. So that angle for a full circle is two pi. 360 degrees, 2 pi. So, or uh, 180 degrees pi. Okay, so let's, we, and for our inner circle and our outer circle, these angle ranges are actually the same. So we're going to plug those bounds in, and then we're going to notice that we can actually combine our two integral expressions. If you can see that kind of starting out uh, and notice that right away, you can combine them, but I just kind of want to do this step by step so that what I'm doing is actually making sense as I'm doing it. Okay, so our bounds for, uh, for phi over here, so 0 to 2 pi for phi, right? And then 0 to pi for our theta. So 0 to pi and 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so we are essentially trying to add both of these together the whole time, right? So 1 plus 2 to give us our total um, uh, integral of d dot ds. So let's go ahead and add them. And we can actually combine like terms here. So, um, so combining them, we're actually going to have one subtracted. So we have 1 over r out minus 1 over r in, right? These two. And then we just have that multiplied by our integral expression because we noticed that with our bounds and everything, our expression is actually the same. If we had different bounds for these, we wouldn't be able to combine them this way. Um, so this is just sort of a luxury of how the shape is set up just because they're both full spheres and they have the full range of angles that are the same. Okay, so one over r out, over r in, and we are going to integrate for sine of theta d theta. Uh, so we're gonna end up with negative cosine of theta from zero, oh, that's a terribly drawn theta, isn't it? Negative cosine of theta from zero to pi. Uh, and then for this guy, uh, we're actually going to use an identity to integrate for a cosine squared. Um, we, I will continue on at the end of this problem and show you how to manually do this, but this is just sort of Calc 2 review here. Um, and it's a little tedious, so I just kind of want to, for the sake of time, um, I mean, because we're here to kind of learn how to set up these problems and uh, do these problem types, not to review Calc 2. So if you do want to have like a um, integral table for your exam, just for to be able to check your work, that is totally acceptable as well too. Um, and so just the way we're reading this here, so this is our question, here's our solution. So our um, phi is our variable, so we are taking uh, one half phi minus one quarter sine of two phi uh, from, uh, what is our range here, zero to two pi. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue with our problem here. Um, okay, let's go ahead and plug in and solve these kind of piece by piece. So one over r out minus one over r in, Okay, so cosine, we have uh, um, negative cosine of pi, right, minus a negative cosine of zero. Um, so cosine of zero is one, and cosine of pi is negative one. So we have minus, so we have minus a negative one minus a negative one. So that's gonna give us one plus one, essentially. Uh, so we have uh, one plus one which is going to be equal to 2. Uh, okay, then we have that multiplied by, um, so we have, we'll do this guy actually solved out, 1 half times 2 pi 
minus 1 quarter times sine of 2 times 2 pi. Uh, and let's get minus. So we're doing the top bounds first. So we're plugging in this 2 pi into our phi expression here. So plugging it in here, right? Should look pretty familiar. And then we're, so, so top bounds minus the bottom bounds here. Uh, minus 1 half times 0 minus 1 quarter sine of 2 times 0. Okay, so this piece is going to go to 0, so sine of 0 is 0. Uh, this is obviously also 0. Okay, so what is sine of 4 pi? Sine of 4 pi uh, also 0 because uh, it's periodic, uh, so it's going to cancel. So we're going to end up with, okay, let's go ahead down to the next page here. I'll try to zoom a little less. 1 over r out minus 1 over r in. Um, multiplied by 2, multiplied by our surviving pieces of the expression, just right here. So 1 half times 2 pi multiplied by pi. Okay, so let's, right now, let's plug in our r out. My battery is probably going to die. R in. Uh, so our outer radius is equal to 3, and our inner radius is equal to 2. If we scroll back up and look at our figure, you see this. We're looking at this outer radius and then this inner radius, so the larger circle, and then just minus the core. So we're taking the core out of there. Um, and so we have 1 over 3 minus 1 over 2 uh, times 2 pi. Okay, so let's convert these here. So we're going to do 2 over 2 multiplied by 1 over 3. Uh, just because we need to make them the same fraction. So 3 over 3 times 1 half, right? So just combining our fractions. Um, so we're going to end up with 2 sixths minus... 3 sixths times 2 pi, uh, which is going to be equal to minus 1 sixth times 2 pi, uh, which is going to be equal to negative uh, 2 over 6, 2 pi over 6, so negative pi over 3 is our solution there. Okay, so I'm just going to take a quick second and uh, do the, um, just kind of show how we find this piece in case for those of you who are curious, but other than that, so we have proved uh, side A here, and then we're going to go on and look at side B and verify that side B is equal to side A. So feel free to stop the video here.